What's up Tweenerheads, welcome back to another Tweenerhead Tennis video. Today we are going to be talking about the Laver Cup. Now for those who are new to the channel or are not that into tennis just yet, the Laver Cup was a competition made by Roger Federer and Rod Laver to honor the to honor one of the greatest tennis players of our time and in the past, Rod Laver, he was the only person to win two, all four Grand Slams in the same year and he did it twice. So this is kind of an ode to him. The competition is between Team Europe and Team World. Now the first Labor Cup was held in Prague where Team Europe took the title. 2018 was in Chicago in the United States. That was taken by Team Europe. And now it is in Geneva, Roger Federer's hometown. And looks like Team Europe might win again. Let's just start off with the rosters for each team. Now Team Europe has Rafael Nadal, Roger Federer, Sissipas, Fonini, Zverev, and Dominic Team. Their alternate is Roberto Batista Agut, and he's inside the top 10 as well. They're captained by Bjorn Borg, by the way. Now, on Team World, you have John Isner, Milos Raonic, Nick Kyrgios, Denis Shapovalov, Jack Sock, Taylor Fritz, and Jordan Thompson as an alternate. If you're wondering if anyone on Team World is ranked higher than anyone on Team Europe, no one is. And <laughs> this is... Kind of, this is a competition that, in my mind, is kind of like the Ryder Cup in golf. You have Team USA versus Team Europe. They're trying to create that competition where you bring the best of the best of each side and bring them together to play for this giant silver trophy, which, by the way, is probably heavier than the Stanley Cup. And recently, it's been apparent that a lot of people think that this is not maybe the best competition or this is not necessary. I mean, it's a very prestigious event and it's a very popular event with all the big players and all the big names, but people have had some doubts as to whether the competition is fair. Just looking at the rosters at the first point, it's you can clearly see that Team Europe has an advantage. Just, just hands down, There's if do not doubt it. Just by the rankings, the competition, and just everything in general. The only person that has had a winning record against the big three like Rafa and Roger is Nick Kyrgios. Jack Sox still not in the top 200. It's basically a combination of Americans and Australians and Canada. Which in my mind is very interesting to see as the only options for people for Team World. Works in a certain way where it's kind of like college you have singles doubles and you play to a certain amount of points now the goal for each team is to be played over a certain amount of days and your goal as a team to, is to get to 13 points on first day it's worth one point if you win a match on the second day it's worth two points on the third day it's three points so on and so forth the first team to get to 13 wins the title now europe like i said before is taking the first two years title i think it's an interesting concept because I, not many competitions like that besides the davis cup is played to win a certain amount of games or points and the team aspect I think in tennis is really lacking and I think that's why they're having a lot of team competitions lately that they're trying to add on to the schedule like Laver Cup, now the ATP Cup, Davis Cup. But getting back to the rosters, two people that have come out and said they will not play Laver Cup is Felix Auger Aliassi and Stan Wawrinka. The main reasons why these two superstars have decided not to play in this tournament is because they're not playing for ATP points. After the US Open, there seems to be the season's still going on and it's this season's very long, but that's besides the point. And I think a lot of players when it comes to competitions like these, they want to still be playing for points. They want to still be playing for prize money and they want to keep increasing their ranks so if there was some initiative like points and maybe a little bit more prize money these players like Stan Wawrinka who's from Switzerland by the way and decided not to play as well as Felix Auger Aliassime don't want to play because there's not enough incentive within these games just I just think in some cases there could have been better choices I think in other countries as well have other players that could have fit better into the team or have a better ranking than some on the team world and I'm not necessarily picking on team world but if you just look at the roster of team Europe it's like the Monstars playing Looney Tunes it just it just doesn't seem fair sometimes side note I think team world does have better chemistry than team Europe that's it I think if they were to beat them it's because in doubles and just because their connection 
can really bring themselves to play better on a court with everyone watching and supporting them. That's how I think Team World can get the best of Team Europe. If we look at other countries that have players that can play for Team World, I would look at under Argentina, Pella, Schwartzman. If Del Poultra was healthy, I think he would have been a good fit as well as Brazil. If you want to talk about doubles players, why don't you bring in Marcelo Melo or Bruno Suarez from Brazil? That would have been a good team world fit because Marcelo Melo and Bruno Suarez get along with almost everybody on tour. When it comes to other countries, why did we not mention Russia? Now, Kachanov, Rublev, and Medvedev are all having unbelievable years, but it's interesting how they wouldn't reach out to play or ask them to play in this tournament because I think they would they definitely would have brought another big advantage for them having these top guys playing. So I was just very curious to see not one Russian on that squad. I, I don't know what you guys think, but I just thought that was very interesting. Now let's look at it from a fan's perspective. Now the Labor Cup is supposed to be a prestigious event and with the black courts and the highlights and all the best players in the world. But from a fan's perspective, it is very, very pricey. <laughs> I mean, the cheapest ticket is $400. And the most expensive ticket is closer to 1400 I I do like this idea of the competition, but I just think it's tough when you have these kind of competitions and you're trying to promote this sport and honor one of the greatest sportsmen in tennis of all time. And it's, you have to pay premium pricing if you want to watch premium tennis. Uh, I don't know what we could do to fix that. I feel like it's very tough to say how we can fix that, but it's a prestigious tournament. Let's pay an absurd amount of money. I really don't I really don't know what to say about that. I think if we were to go forward thinking about the teams uh, versus Team World and Team Europe, I think there should definitely be team captains, not just coaches like Bjorn Borg and John McEnroe. But I think it should be kind of like a mock draft. What if it was they pick each player rather than just have like these players from here, these players from here, and then they compete against each other. Why don't we have Roger versus Rafa or Roger versus Novak? Or if Roger's one of the founders, he has to be a team captain. That's why I say Roger first. But why don't why don't have a mock draft? Why don't you have players picking each one, kind of like in the NBA where they did LeBron versus Giannis, have that kind of all-star feel to it. That way it's it's meant to be an all-star, like the all-star weekend for players. And now that it's it's a part of the ATP schedule and their head-to-heads versus Team World and Team Europe count on the ATP tour, like John Isner beat Rafael Nadal at the Labor Cup, that's now on his ATP record. I want to know your guys' opinion about the Labor Cup as well. It's just a couple days away, so before it starts, I want to know your guys' opinion of what you guys think about it. So leave a comment down below, as well as making sure you leave a big like on this video, as well as making sure you subscribe to Tweener Head Tennis. We just passed the 500 mark for subscribers, and we're trying to get to 1,000 by the end of the year, so make sure you do hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check us out more behind-the-scenes content, all our social medias are in the description below, as well as our website link at www.tweenerheadtennis.com. And I hope to see you guys for the next video. Thanks, guys.